listen to a couple of uh, verses from Psalm 27 today as we're looking at how we can grow uh, while we're in our waiting times in our life. And uh, Psalm 27, I'm just going to read the first and the last part, but we're going to look at this psalm together. And it begins with these wonderful words. David wrote this, and David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of what should I be afraid? And then at the very end of this psalm, he says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. We've been looking at a series of messages on how we can grow. And, you know, we talked about growing through our failures. Our failures can sometimes help us to see our need for God and for his forgiveness. And we can also look at how we can grow through our weakness, because in our weakness, we find the strength of God. We're going to look next time about growing through loss and how that brings us to grow. And you might say, well, how can all these painful things help us to grow? Well, what we're going to see today is that we can grow through the painful times when we have to wait and none of us likes to wait. We all want things to happen right away. And it's hard for us sometimes when you're in the waiting room at a doctor's office and you try to read the uh, uh, magazines that are there or you try to find something to do on your phone. And it seems like when we're waiting, the time goes so slowly and we get so frustrated because we hate to wait. We want things instantly. We want them now. And sometimes it's hard for us because we just don't have any patience for waiting. Uh, some men are especially like that about reading directions. They don't have time to read the directions. And Christmas comes and the kids have these things that have to be put together. And we as men sometimes put them together first, do it wrong, have to take them apart, and then read the directions because we were too impatient to wait and read them carefully. Well, in the Bible, we read of how important waiting is. And David alludes to it here. Wait for the Lord, he says. And then he says it again. Be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. Do you know that in the Bible, there are 366 times, one for every day of the year, when it's leap year, 366 times where the Bible says, wait for the Lord, wait for the Lord, wait for the Lord. It's like God is just saying to us over and over and over 366 times, and we still sometimes don't want to wait. We still find it hard to wait for God. I want you to think about for a moment different people in the Bible that had to wait a long time. One of them was Moses. Moses, when he was a young man, he killed an Egyptian, and then he fled into the wilderness so that he wouldn't be killed by Pharaoh or by the Egyptians for doing this. And he waited 40 years in the wilderness before God called him through the burning bush to lead his people to freedom. 40 years in a wilderness waiting for the next step in his life. Think about that. Or you think of Noah. I mean, Noah was told by God to build an ark. And there was no rain happening, but God said, build an ark. I'm going to send a flood. Do you know that 120 years Moses waited for that flood to come? 120 years. Or you think of it in the Bible how uh, Job lost everything. He lost his sons and daughters, 10 of them. He lost his animals. He lost his servants. He lost everything. He was a wealthy man. And it took a long time of waiting before he was restored by God. In the Bible, waiting isn't just something that happens sometimes. It seems almost like the rule rather than the exception. It, it, it's extremely often in the Bible that people had to wait. And then you think of David. Just think, when he was a young man, he was a shepherd boy, in fact, he was anointed by Samuel to be the king over Israel. But Saul was king. 
And do you know that David had to wait 15 years before he became king at the age of 30? 15 years of waiting to be king. And during that time, it wasn't easy for David because Saul hated him. Saul knew he had been anointed to be the next king, and Saul tried to kill him twice. He threw a spear at David to try to kill him. And David had opportunities to get back at Saul. David one time snuck up on Saul when he was in a, in a cave, and he cut off a piece of his garment, his robe. And then later on, when they were outside the cave, he said, Saul, I could have killed you, but he wouldn't kill God's anointed. You know, David had to wait 15 years, and now he tells us, wait for the Lord, be strong. He learned how to wait on the Lord. You know, David had several choices. David could have been in for revenge against Saul, but he didn't do that. Or, you know, David could have chosen, and he had choices. He could have decided just to get bitter and have revenge. Or he could have decided to take everything in his own hands and say, I'm not going to wait for God's time. I'm going to make this happen now. But he didn't. Or he could have been so filled with anxiety and, and, and uh, being so uh, afraid of the time, of how long it would be and what Saul would do to him, that he could have been consumed by his worrying. You've heard the phrase, you can worry yourself to death. And that's literally true. Doctors will tell you that. Some people's lives are so filled with worry that really they die from effects of all that anxiety within them. But David didn't do that. David didn't worry. He, he went to God and got the strength to wait upon the Lord. And I think what he did is in this psalm is he shows us three things that you and I can do when we're in God's waiting room in life. And you never know when that time will be in your life. You never what, know what circumstances it may be. But there are three things that we can do. The first one is like David, we can know God and know who he is. And we can learn that. David learned that as a shepherd boy when he was alone and all there was was sheep around him and the wide open spaces and the stars in the sky. And, and, and he was out there in nature and he would be able to uh, talk to God and he looked up in the sky and he saw how great God is and he really got to know who God is. That's the first thing. The first verse says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of what should I be afraid? He got to know who God is. And you can get to know who God is. As you read his word and as you look at what God has created, you get to know God's power, but also as you read about what Jesus did as he came to die for us and God sent Jesus for us, his compassion and love. You know who God is, and you can know and learn that more and more. And then in the waiting room of God, you can wait on God's timing. But the second thing that he does here, he shows how much he trusts God. He doesn't just know God. David trusts God. Listen to what he says. He, he knows what's going to happen, he says. He says, my enemies and my foes, they will stumble and fall. He knows this. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. And then he also says these words. He says, for in the day of trouble, God will keep me safe. He trusted God. God's going to keep me safe. He will hide me in the shelter of his tent. And he will set me high upon a rock. That's trusting in God. That's believing that God will bring him through. In fact, he says, then my head will be exalted. And he says, at God's sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. David was facing somebody who hated him and wanted to destroy him. He was facing a time of waiting for years and years in terrible circumstances. But he said, I will sing 
I will sacrifice. God will keep me. God will hide me. And you see, he not only knew God, that's the first thing we can do, and know what God is like, but he also trusted God. But he did one more thing. He talked to God. He prayed. He brought his needs before God in his time of waiting. Listen to what he says about, in fact, the last part of this Psalm 27 is a is a prayer to God. He talks to God. Beautiful when he says, My heart says to you, Lord, I will seek your face. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away. You have been my helper. Do not forsake me, Lord. Though my father and mother may forsake me, the Lord will receive me. And then he says, Teach me your ways, Lord. See how he prays? Lead me in a straight path. He says, do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, to those who are malicious against me. And I remain confident, Lord, that I will see your goodness in the land of the living. And then he reminds us again, wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. You know, you have a choice. You can become bitter. You can become vengeful. You can become anxious and worried and consumes your life and worry to death or you can know who God is trust him and also talk to him and he will give you the strength when you're in his waiting room now I don't know what it is in your life that maybe you're waiting for sometimes we wait for people that we love and it's hard to wait for them to change when they're destroying themselves. Sometimes it happens to somebody within our family. Sometimes it's a grandson or a granddaughter. Sometimes it's a son or a daughter. And we try to change them. We try to fix it ourselves. We try to do something to make them change. Maybe they're destroying themselves in, in, in what they're eating or, or what they're drinking or what they're smoking or it could be anything but we see the destructive pattern in their life and we want to change others and we try to do that but you know what we can do what David did he was in an impossible situation for him to change and he waited upon the Lord and in his time God made all things beautiful for him God was there for him God, as he says here, is the one who brought me through, and he can do that for you too. Let's pray before God. Lord, thank you that we know who you are. You are our light and our salvation. You are the stronghold of our life. Thank you that we know even Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And in this world where so much is dark and in darkness, we thank you for the light that you shed upon our path, for the way in which you lead us and guide us. And even in those times of waiting when it's so difficult for us to wait, you are the God who brings us through. So we thank you that we know you, but we can also trust you like David did. And we pray that you will give us that grace to trust you every step of the way. Lead us and guide us along the way. For if you lead us, we will not stray. Thank you that you have that power and that love, that compassion to lead us every step of our life. But also thank you that we can talk to you and you will walk with us and talk to us as we bring our needs and our praise to you in prayer. We thank you that you are always available to us. Lord, give us the patience to wait upon you and give us the gift of trusting in you and not being afraid. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's sing another song at this time. It's right from the scriptures. It's number 465. Number 465. In his time. In his time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. And you know, that's exactly if you have your red book there that you're going to sing from. It says at the top, this is based on Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, that says, He has made everything beautiful in his time. 
Sometimes it's a long time before we see how God brings all things together for good to those who love him. But let's sing, in his time, and the second verse is, in your time. It's a prayer. In your time, you make all things beautiful in your time. Let's sing those two stanzas of this beautiful song, number 465. It goes like this. Thank you. 